Race 2 of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup. We're in La Plan in France, 1,600 metres plus above sea level in the French Alps, in the foothills, in the shadow of the awesome Mont Blanc. This 1992 Winter Olympic venue for the Albeville Games recently been announced with the opportunity to host a second Winter Games. That will be a great boost for the French fans, for the French teams, if that comes to pass. Well, after our first heat, we have a highly entertaining top three. Jackie Pfeiffer, you probably recognize the name if I say Jacqueline Lerling, 2017 world champion, one of Germany's best sliders. She's only done three World Cup starts in the whole of 22 and 23. She is back and she is in third place. Tabby Sturker. We've had ballet dancers on the podium in Women's Skeleton before. We have never had a trapeze flying artist, but the British slider in her second World Cup race ever lies in second place. And our first round leader is our former World Cup champion, Kimberly Boss, the Olympic bronze medalist. She is one of the very first out of the start shed, 12th on the ice in a field of 31. And Kimberly leads, but it is a very tightly packed lead group. So nine hundreds of a second cover the top three, twelve hundreds, the top four. Jane Channel could be in with a shout of a medal here. Don't count out Mystique Rowe of the USA in her second World Cup race. Valentina Margaglio. What about Olympic champion Hannah Neiser? What about Tina Herman, the four-time world champion? It's a long stretch for them, but strange things happen. Sarah Schmidt, the rookie from Switzerland, in the top ten, ahead of Lesia Kripper, then Kim Armans, Nikel Silvera, and Hallie Clark, ahead of Freya Tarbit, also making her second World Cup start. Third of our British sliders, Amelia Coltman, in 19th. Behind rookie Sarah Rogic, what a great run from the American as well. And Kelly Delka in the top 20. Anna Zaulita, 25th, will be the first off as the remaining athletes don't make the second heat. Chao Dan, who took the silver medal three weeks ago in Beijing, misses the cut here, and so do a bunch of our new sliders. So 25 go through into the second heat. This is a rule change this year with the demise of the Intercontinental Cup. More athletes from more nations are allowed into World Cups. The field is bigger. The field is 32 sleds, or was 32 sleds, before Suzanne Crea, the world champion, pulled out overnight. And 25 will go through. And so we now have a bigger second heat. Anna Zauliter, Julia Simpson, another rookie from Switzerland. She uh, gets through in her first World Cup race. And Sarah Schmidt there you saw in the top 10. What a great first round run from her. So we've got lots to look forward to. And Sandra Fumagali, you saw there, there's Tina Herman, a little bit uh, disappointed with her run, uh, particularly after winning uh, in the race in Beijing, but she was in the top three after the first heat. So here's our start order. Anna Zaulita, Yulia Simpson, uh, Li Yuqi, the only Chinese athlete to go through. From Estonia, Dars Data Zunta, rookie Anna Unterscheider. From Austria, Kelly Delka from Puerto Rico, and so on. And we have more rookies as well, more new sliders. Freya Tarbit, only her second World Cup race. Sarah Schmidt, her first World Cup race. She's just behind Tina Herman of Germany. And then as we get into the lead group, Olympic champion Hannah Neiser, Valentina Margaglio, Mystic Row, her second World Cup race as well, as it is for Tabby Stocker in second place. And Kimberly Boss is the leader. 25 sleds to go, medals to be decided. On her World Cup debut, Anna Zaulita, there's her coach, Alex Auer, whipping up the audience. Lots of kids from the schools here locally, very good news. And Anna Zaulita, her name translates as sunshine, and that's what she brings to the start line. 6.80 first start. Let's see if she's got a little more in the second. 6.86 start. Shouldn't have differed that much from the first run to the second. But hopefully she'll have erased any little first run nerves that she felt her first time, really apart from the World Championships in front of the cameras and the lights. Track she doesn't know especially well. 
86.5 kilometers now, so she is setting the pace in the second heat. Down into the big corner, 10. Looking through 11 and 12 here. And then through this fast, low labyrinth, 13, 14, 15, and big corner, 16. It's sort of double pressure, triple pressure almost. Picking up speed all the way down here. And down the longer stretch into corner 19. Out to the final turn, across the line with a 64.22. Her first heat was a 64.22. There you go. So there's some consistency from Anna Zaulita. Well, her World Cup debut, the young Austrian making it through into the field, just 24 years of age. Learned to slide on a luge sled in Innsbruck and started in skeleton in November 2020. Three seasons on, she makes her World Cup debut. That's fine, fast progress. You can hear the way that the skeleton sleds rise and fall with the pressure of gravity or of the G-forces. You'll see less of that from the bobsleds. <laughs> Making a lot of noise now for Switzerland's rookie, Julia Simpson. Third generation slider, granddaughter of Jean Wicky, Olympic champion. Her mum, Connie Simpson, slid skeleton. And Alan Wicky, her dad, also a slider. 684 getaway for her. She started 684 in the first heat. So building her advantage over Anna Zaulita. Both runs count. And in the World Championships and the Olympic Games, all four runs count together. So consistency is one of the key elements to any slider. Good aerodynamic form. We grew up in Dresden, in Germany, not far from the Altenburg track. So I'm sure a driver's track like this will feel fairly familiar to her. This is a nice looking run, really building her advantage. 2800s ahead of Zalita early on. Now nearly six tenths up. This could be three quarters of a second by the line. Little rub on the wall. 8700, 6361 compared to 6396 in her first heat. That's a really good run. She tidied up the bottom of the track, but kind of drifted away from her in the first run. And that would have been good enough for 21st place in the first heat, rather than 24th, where she ended up. So Julia Simpson successfully makes her World Cup debut, the third sliding generation from the family. Oh, big hit there on the take on to bounce the athlete clear off the sled. First time in the leader's box. Next up from China, Li Yuqi. Li, 25 years of old, age finished seventh on her home ice in Beijing in the season opener. 6.45 getaway, 6.56 in the first heat, so that's a notable improvement. 1100s at the start, should be a quarter second better on the way down at the bottom. And she had a handy advantage over Yulia Simpson. Oh, a little flop there. She's building on that. Neither she nor Xiaodan had raced here before. So learning this track fast. 8100, the gap's coming down a little. She'll have enough in hand to be in front. Better speed than the Swiss slider. Long skid there, so some of that speed going away. Working really hard at the bottom part of the track. Lots of toe steering going on. And cross the line, 63-11. That's six tenths of a second better than her first heat, which was a 63-73. 63-11 is the 15th fastest trip down the track today.
Okay, a little late flop. The sled rocking and rolling, but here you see the big pressures pushing the sled up and then releasing it and then pushing it up again. So Liu Qi made the cut. Xiao Dan, the silver medalist in Beijing, did not. Li is leading as we now get to our first time slider from Estonia, Data Zunta. This is her third World Cup race, but her first in the white, blue, and black of Estonia. A little cleaner load than in her first run. There are a few missed loads in the first run. It's such a long start area. Athletes have to find a very different rhythm here. Third best speed so far from the second fastest start, but she's in the red behind Liu Qi. Li started three tenths quicker, and Data only had seven hundreds over her from the first row. Looks like Liu Qi will stay in the leader's box. We had first-time sliders from Malta, Liechtenstein, and Colombia in the field. And a first-time slider from Estonia as well. First time we've had Estonia represented in skeleton. Although Data, not a total novice when it comes to World Cup racing. This is her third start. A little bit of paddling with the feet going on to the bottom of the track. Second place. 63.67, just one hundredth slower than her first run down. Not the improvement she needed to hold off Li Yu Shi. So at the moment, Li leads from Data Zunta with Yulia Simpson and Anna Zaulita third and fourth. Again, drops right down as the pressure fades a little in the middle of the big double pressure corner 12. Little skid breaks out there. She just paddles away to straighten the sled up. Well, back in the World Cup. And now at the top, Anja Unterscheider from Austria. Getting herself fired up as well in her first ever World Cup race. 1200s in hand over Li Yu Shi. She doesn't start as quickly as the Chinese slider. 688 in the first heat, 676 in the second, so that is a notable improvement. But still, 3100s given away to Li Yu Qi at the start. Li starting 1100s quicker as well. Long slide there as well. This upper labyrinth whipping from left to right down into turn 10. And a short shoot through corner 11 into 12. Double pressure. And Lee bringing it back a little now. Better speed. Uh, beg your pardon. Unterscheider bringing it back a little over Lee. And here with better speed on board from 4,500s back to 2,200s. If she continues with this progress, she might just dip ahead at the line. It's going to be close. She is ahead. 63-1-6. So by 700s of a second, there's Liu Qi. Little ripple of applause for Anya Unterscheider. So on her debut, the 20-year-old takes the lead, holds her position. Focus there. As the eyes looking for the line. And into turn four. It's coming off with a little bit of a skid. Just shuffling with the hips to get it straightened up. The tiniest of movements sometimes on these sleds. Sometimes really big movements. Hey, thanks for watching. See you in the <laughs> Yeah, next race is Innsbruck, her home track. Kelly Delka now, 20th after the first of our two heats for Puerto Rico. So the only Central American country now represented in the skeleton field, 6-6-0. Six, six, Central American Caribbean, kind of in there somewhere. With the lead, 1700s up on Anja Unterscheider. And she had 100th in hand from the first heat. 
Kelly with a bit more sliding experience than her Austrian rival. And this is a very nice second run from Kelly Delka. Really starting to turn on the speed at the bottom. Still head and shoulders quite high off the sled as she's looking for the line. This is not a track she knows intimately. And you need that knowledge to know where you are on the track and just to believe in the line. 4,600's up. This will be a handy lead at the finish. 62-92. Her first run was 63-60. So that is a sizable improvement for Kelly Delka of Puerto Rico. Best World Cup result for Kelly coming on a track she knows well at Lake Placid in the USA. Again, rocking and rolling again through these tight transitions. Comes out here pretty straight, just a slight shift of the hips. Back home. <laughs> so Kelly Delco with the lead. Five down, 20 to go. 20th after the first of our two heats here. Race two of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup in La Plania, France. Great Britain's Amelia Coltman. 600 of a second in hand over Kelly Delco of Puerto Rico, who's just gone down into the leader's box. 6.50 her start, 6.49 in the first heat. And Amelia Coltman coming 14th in the start draw. This is her fifth World Cup race. Former tennis player. Well, clearly hand-to-eye coordination and all-round fitness, not a bad thing in tennis. Certainly not a bad thing in skeleton either. 1600s up at the start, the gap is shrinking, was down to 1300s. Needs to clean it up a little bit. Lots of legwork going on with Amelia. Second best speed, still 1300s. There's still ice to cover. It's a 1500 meter track, there are 19 corners in it. It's busy, busy, busy. She's behind by 1700s, 63.15. Well, better than her 63-54 in the first heat, but not quite enough to hold off Kelly Delka. Samia Coltman will be no worse than 18. Now, it is Kelly Delka who takes or stays in the leader's box. Now the horse Amelia. Again, look here in the big double pressure. Lots of height. It's as high as you see many of them. Tiny skier as he comes onto the straight. Hi everyone, thanks for your support at home. Well, we'll try and find out before the race in Innsbruck what the red arrows on the helmet are all about, but let's concentrate now on another of our rookies, uh, second race, let's say. Not exactly a rookie, Sarah Roderick from the USA. 30-year-old made her debut in Innsbruck in January 2021, then went to the World Championships in Altenburg. We've not seen her at the senior level since then. Great to see her back in the squad here in Europe. And she'll go back to the scene of her debut in a week's time in Innsbruck. Good start, 6.32, 6.41 in the first heat. So she's found a tenth at the start. And all of that helps accelerate you all the way down the track if you have a clean run. There's 4,700s up, down to 3,900s over Kelly Delka. Only had 1,300s in hand from the first heat. The speed's going away. A little ragged down at the bottom of the track. 2,400s. Only the sixth fastest sled so far, though. Another tap and a skid. Has she got enough in hand? It's going to be close. It is close, but she does have enough in hand. 62.89 compared to a 63.47 in the first heat. 
So Kelly Delka leads the leader's box. Coach Matt Antoine leads the, leads the coach's box at the top of the track. And Sarah Roderick has the lead with 17 to go. Hi, Dan. Hi, Smudgy. Hi, Goggles. Again, that hard take on early in the run that we see so many sliders just getting bounced around. A little tap. Love you all. Good job. <laughs> Next up for the Czech Republic is Anna Fernstedt, 17th after the first heat. And she's got 2300s in hand. Let's see if she can put her experience to good effect here. 6.68 the getaway compared to 6.75 in the first heat, so she finds a little bit more, Anna. She's one of just seven sliders who competed here in the last World Cup skeleton race in February 2020. She finished in 13th spot. She's going to need to find a couple more places to match that 17th after first heat. She's dropped behind Sarah Roderick and Kelly Delker at the moment. So she's going to drop towards the tail of the top 20. Closing the gap a little bit more now. Might be close at the line, 1100s in front, 63-01. So she found the speed at the bottom. It's less about the start and more about the drive for her. And she is another of the athletes getting advice from French slider Agat Bessar, who would have given anything to be able to compete here in the World Cup on her home track. But Agat recovering from uh, Achilles surgery, a second operation that she had in the autumn, still not quite fit to race. Again, a little exit there, big hit on the wall, gouging the ice. She creeps back ahead of Sarah Roderick and a Fernstedt, the leader, with 16 to go. Next up is Mimi Raniva, third in the World Cup ranking. She was the bronze medalist in the race in Beijing. In with a ninth fastest start in the first heat, 6.38. 6.38 again in the second heat. Fifth best speed at turn four. So she's got 3,400s in hand over Anna Fernstedt at the moment. Third best speed, quicker than the slider from Czechia. 6,300s up, kind of wild on some of these exits though, Mimi. She finished in seventh place in the race here in February 2020. She's a long way from that at the moment, unless this is some sort of super bottom pass of the track. From 63 to 43 to 2,500 up, she's not got the speed that Fernstedt had. She's going to drop into the red, and Anna made speed at the bottom. Mimi Reneva is going to slip a place, maybe even two. It is two behind Sarah Roderick. So Anna Fernstedt stays in the leader's box. 63-2-1 for Mimi, 63-2-0 in her first heat. So whatever she had hoped to affect with uh, maybe some changes to the sled between the heats to the setup or some changes to what she was doing didn't have enough of the desired effect. And look at this early on in the run. Rocking and rolling, skidding, sliding. Just the timing was off. Another day, another dollar. Anna Fernstedt, the leader from Sarah Rogic and Mimi Reneva. Our first 10 sleds are down, 15 to go. Busy weekend of skeleton here in La Plagne, France. 15 sleds to go in the women's skeleton race. Alessandra Fumagalli of Italy in 15th spot after the first of the two heats. 
just her seventh World Cup race, Alessandra. 6.34. So good getaway. And the expansion of the field after the cancellation of the Intercontinental Cup Series that has been the second tier of skeleton sliding for so many years has meant that teams like the Italians can bring in another athlete over what would have been a normal quotient of two for them. And so Fumagalli, part of the team, hoping now to have a full season. 3,700s up, the gap coming down over Anna Fernstedt. Fourth best speed, she's sort of hovering around, just about going to take the lead. Another 16, long corner 17, long skid on the exit. And out of 19, hits the wall, just enough, six hundreds of a second. Goodness me, that was close. 63.07, so five hundreds quicker than her first heat. And she takes the lead by 600s from Anna Fernstedt and Sarah Rodrick. Alessandra Fumagalli will finish no worse than 15th. And that not quite her World Cup personal best. She's got two 13th place finishes. Cleaner start, though. She missed the handle with her left hand on the first start. And her wrist went down onto the ice which obviously not only took speed out of the sled, but can't have been at all comfortable. 14 to go as we get to our second GB slider, Freya Tarbit, another of the young athletes brought through by James Howard. And Freya with Tabby Sturker making her World Cup debut in Winterberg in January. 6.29 getaway, 6.28 in the first heat. That's a top six start. She can tidy up even a couple of the errors that crept into her first run. This could be very productive indeed. A tenth up over Alessandra Fumigali. She only had 500s from the first heat, 3,700s up. That's the extra speed at the start. She was only 500s of a second quicker than Fumigali, but kept it alive. 3,300s, a couple of wild exits on the transitions have brought the speed down a bit. 12th best speed, working too hard, doing too much on the sled maybe. 5th best speed. 500s in it. She's behind Alessandra Fumagalli as the race to the line, 600s behind. 63.18, just a whisker slower than her first run. There's James Howard in the leader's box with, uh, in the coach's box rather, with Matthias Guggenberger. Martin Stukurs is here as well. Man who, of course, won the last men's skeleton race here back in 2020. Won here in 2015 as well. No, he didn't actually. That was, uh, I think he was second in 2015. However, Freya Tarbet again dropping down in the big double pressure. See, in these temperatures, the tape doesn't tape doesn't stick so well. So our race leader, Alessandra Fumagalli, Halley Clark, wasting no time blasting away from the line for Canada. Those dado shoes. Halley with two World Cup medals already in her rookie season last year. 6.40. That'll be somewhere around the 10th best start in the field. First time here on this track. But next week, we return to Eagles, where she also took a medal last year. Took two silver medals in her rookie career. The rookie season, one in Whistler, the season opener, and one in Eagles. So she'll be looking forward to getting back there for sure. It's a good looking run, keeping the lead absolutely alive. 2900s to 2900s, 3100s creeping away from Alessandra Fumagalli. I think the leader's time is over. We have a new leader on our hands, Halley Clark, but how much in front? 3900s, that's a good run. 62.74, so that's a quarter second better. 
That's uh, three tenths better, 3200s faster than her first run. So big improvement from Hallie Clark. And the athletes who don't know this track, and that's most of them, will be happy with improvements like that. To find a third of a second in each of the runs is very good news indeed. Hallie Clark takes the lead, and again, so it drops completely out of sight, and then she just has to drop that left toe a little to stop the sled rising too high. Thanks everyone watching at home. So first World Cup race for Canada for Halley Clark. Next up, it's Nicole Silveira for Brazil. Coach Richard Bromley is the sled he builds on the ice for his athlete. So let's see what she can produce. North America's Cup champion in the 21-22 season, Nicole Silvera. Nurse from Calgary, Ontario in Canada. And uh, as well as competing during COVID, she was nursing during COVID. So testing times for sure for her. It's what makes these athletes the people they are. 1,200s back at the start to 2,900s back. Looping height there. Is she going to find any speed at the bottom? 3,600s back. She needs to really be finding it now. Head up, shoulders up. Doesn't know the track at all well. And this is not the second heat she would have been hoping for. 4,100s back. She's going to drop her out of the top three at the moment. In fact, the top three are four at the moment. She's fifth at the line, 63-3-0. A third of a second slower than her first heat was the 63-01. So as we head towards our top ten, Nicole Silveira of Brazil will drop down the order of fraction. Career best of eighth place in Whistler. I have to look up what her best European race result is. I'm not sure that this is going to be it. So Nicole in fifth place with 11 to go. Next up, Kim Marmons, Kim Marmons of Belgium. Just 800s in hand over our current leader, Halle Clark. This is a very tight battle with Freya Tarbit, Halle Clark, Nicole Silvera, and Kim Marmons. And they're all covered by less than a tenth of a second. 6.33 getaway, 6.31 in the first heat. So it gives her a slender advantage over Halle Clark. She added 700s at the start. Nice, neat lines, though, from the Belgian. Finished in ninth place in the 2020 race, her only previous World Cup on this track. 3,400s, growing the lead. A little bit of helmet on the ice. And again, keeping her head buried. A bit more knowledge than some of the rivals around her of this La Plana track. And out of the final turn across the line, 62-5-0. Again, nearly half a second better than her first heat. Which is a 62-9-8. So the Conservera there to offer her congratulations. Kim Malmans has the lead from Halley Clark. She was only 800s up, now 3200s up. Late exit here, just falls out of the turn. And again, climbing, that's quite high up there. Bye bye, La Plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, Halley Clark moves from the leader's box. Kim Marmons moves in. She leads from Halley Clark. Alessandra Fumagalli in third. Ten to go. Race two of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup in La Plana, France. Alessia Gripper of Italy. Fifth fastest start, tenth after the first run. Can she find some improvements?
6.26 getaway, so 100th faster at the start. She had a tenth in hand over Kim Marmons of Belgium from the first heat. Started a fraction quicker than the Belgian girl, but now just starting to lose that. Mistakes early on have sucked the speed out of the sled. She's in the red already. So Marmons looks like she is going to improve on her 11th place. Kim was ninth here three years ago. Seventh best speed for Alessia Kripa. And at the moment, second on the splits ahead of Hallie Clark. But I'm not sure she's got the speed to stay there. Sled does not look like it's carrying much pace. No, third at the line. 63.08 to a 62.88 in the first heat. So losing two tenths of a second on herself there. And she drops back into third place with nine to go. Second out of the start shed. Career high, 13th place in Innsbruck. And right now she's third with nine to go, despite her disappointment at not keeping her position in the top 10, or at least not guaranteed to, this will be a personal best World Cup race. Okay, nine to go, and rookie Sarah Schmidt from Switzerland. What a great first run. The youngest athlete in the field, just 18 years of age. Under 20 junior world champion gold medalist from last season. 6.41, 6.41 in the first heat. Another good run is required here. Decent start. Oh, but a huge skid there is going to take speed away from Sarah. Racing the World Championships in Samaritz in February, the first time we've seen her at the top level. And officially start, started sliding in October 2019. So here we are, four years later. She's in the top 10 on her World Cup debut, and she's already done one World Championships. Slipping away from the lead, though. Fourth on the splits. Might be third ahead of Alessia Kripa of Italy. Third best speed. Going to be close with Kripa. Fifth place at the line. 63-37. So Kim Marman stays in the lead. With eight to go, she leads. So she will match her previous best on this track, Kim Marman's. Three bronze medals in her World Cup career. So Sarah Schmidt slips a little, but for a World Cup debut, top, what will it be? Top 14, top 15 finish is nothing to be disappointed about. And on the track again, she does not know well at all. These late exits, she's just trying to allow the sled to flow. Let it carry its speed. Hi, thank you for watching. So you'll see a lot more of her, I'm sure. Now then, OK, Tina. Tina Hamann of Germany, 1600s in hand over Kim Marmons, the winner of the race in Beijing to open the season. Our four-time world champion. And Tina Hermann, World Cup champion last year, leading the points at the moment, but only in eighth place. 674 start, 100th quicker than her first getaway. But it's in the lower reaches of this track where she's going to really start to, hopefully, for her, reel in leader Kim Marmons. 2500s behind as she lay down, out to half a second. Kim starts considerably quicker than Tina. Tina can drive, though. This woman knows how to find speed. OK, so she stopped the bleeding. Sixth on the splits. She will want to be the leader at the bottom. Second fastest speed. Only Anja Unterscheider was faster there, the Austrian rookie. Whoa, just trying to keep it off the wall. 
Don't think she's got enough. It's not enough at the line. Three tenths back, 62-9-7. Well, she had 62-82 in the first heat. So Kim Marmons, not yet on a World Cup best, but on a PB for this track. She was ninth in 2020. She leads with seven to go. Tina Herman drops to second place. She's such a fierce competitor, Tina Herman. She does not like it when a track beats her. And La Plana has beaten what she planned to do in this second heat. It didn't happen for her. She couldn't even match the pace she found in the first heat. <laughs> Next up, Hannah Neiser for Germany, the Olympic champion. One Olympic gold, one World Cup gold, and a World Cup bronze. Little toast here on the run down into turn one. 6.48 the getaway. Well, she didn't have much in hand over Kim Marmons. She was only a hundredth ahead of Tina Herman. She's only two hundredths ahead of Marmons, and now she drops into the red. That's Kim's extra speed at the start. And here, nearly 1,800 metres above sea level. It is a punishing start area. Long, very flat, and little oxygen in the air. Two hundreds back. Trying to claw her way back into the lead over Kim Marmons. Our reigning Olympic champion, Hannah Neiser. Here we go, in the lead. Now, what can she do about trying to drive towards the medals? It's possibly going to be a little bit out of reach. But across the line, 62-5-2. Compared to 62-8-1 in the first heat, so that's a significant improvement. Nearly three tenths of a second better. 62-5-2 would have been second in the first heat. That is a big run from the Olympic champion. It might not be enough to win it from here, but it's a very strong run, and that's despite a couple of errors early on. <laughs> Bundes trainer Christian Wilder. <laughs> so, sending her love back home. Next up is Italy's Valentina Margaglio, the strongest hair game in the women's field. Now, what can she produce at the start? Normally, she's a really electrifying starter. 6.23 in the first heat was pretty good. Four fastest. 6.12. Hello, everybody. New fastest start, not a new record. That is six flat from Russia's Elena Nikitina back in February 2020. That is the fastest start of the competition by some margin. So Valentina, absolutely rocket assisted at the start. Now, can she control this wild sled all the way down? Gaps come down from 4,900s to 3,400s over Hannah Neiser. Two tenths. Only the 15th best speed. If that's anything close to being right, she's in real trouble here. Only 1,700s. Neiser was clean at the bottom. Long skid, both toes down from Valentina. She's going to be behind at the line. She is behind at the line, only by 200s. 62.58, only 600s of a second slower down the run than Hannah Neiser, but she had 400s in hand only, so she drops back by 200s of a second. Well, she had great speed early on from that start, but again, look at that. Legs akimbo, both knees in play, toes down as well. Yeah. She'll be even more of a force when we get to Innsbruck. Five to go. The Olympic champion is our race leader. Final five sleds. Race two of the BMW IBS F Women's Skeleton World Cup. 
First World Cup race of the season for Mystique Rowe of the USA. Her second World Cup start after racing in Altenburg this January at the end of last season before the World Champs. 6.19, exactly what she did in the first heat. She's the push world champion from Lake Placid last year. Best speed of all. Mystique with a great record behind her. Third in Europe Cup last year, her first full season in Europe. Three wins last year in European racing. Head up a little there just to get her eye on the line. Was 5,300 over Hannah Neiser, now 47, 37. She's losing speed to the German. You can hear the scratching if that's from the chin and the helmet on the ice or from the toes, hard to tell. Still three tenths. She's got enough in the bank. If she's clean now, then she will have the lead and a guaranteed top five finish. Boom, 62-5-0. Two tenths quicker than her first heat, under pressure from the Olympic champion, Misty Rowe. Won the previous World Cup race, she was 19th in Altenburg. She will be on the greater podium, as they call it, in the top six here. A fifth place finish guaranteed. Top five finish for Misty Rowe. Couple of wild late exits, but Hold on, hands up anybody who's not had a couple of wild late exits. Mystique Rowe, there you go. Leads for the USA, four to go. Jane Chandler, Canada, finished in 20th place in the race here in, race here in February 2020. She was in fourth place after the first heat. Three hundredths of a second out of the medals. Go, Jane, go. Another fast starter, 6.23. So she still has a slender advantage over Misty Crow. 500 in hand. And she has raced on this track before. I'm trying to rack my brains to remember whether she came here and trained in 2015 when the women's race was called off. I don't remember that, but she has had at least one race weekend in her World Cup career on this track. 900s back, it's a little wild. And that's taking speed out of the sled. It's gonna be very hard to find again later on down the run. Whoa, big height there. Really not finding the control she wanted in 15. This is going to drop her behind Mystique Rowe and Hannah Neiser and possibly behind Valentina Margallo. She's fifth at the line, 62.98. What well, an enormous improvement on 20th place three seasons ago. But she was so close to the podium. And for Jane Channel, that will be very much of a disappointing second run. So checking the helmets, there's obviously been contact somewhere. Just again, that hard take on is really brutal on the body. It was a pretty clean exit, but by that stage, the speed had gone. <laughs> Hannah Neiser watching the replay with her as well. Mystic Row leads from Hannah Neiser and Valentina Margallo. Three to go. And all eyes will be on Jacqueline Pfeiffer, a new name in the World Cup. Jacqueline Lurling, though, former world champion, multiple medalist, 12 wins, 10 silver medals, eight bronze medals in World Cup racing. Jacka is back, 6.64. So better than her 6.65 first heat. But Jacqueline Lurling is not about the start. Jacqueline Lurling is about the speed at the finish. And Jackie Pfeiffer is no different. 5,600s back. That's all the difference in speed at the start between her and Mystique Row. Mystique 619, Jacka 664. Nearly half a second slower. She should be 
a second and a half behind nearly at the bottom. She's not, she's bringing it back. Best speed of all. Long, lean, aerodynamically fantastic her shake through the air. Has she got enough? Looked like a bit more toe steering. Second, best speed. Top three, third, second at the line, 62-65. Mystic Row is in the medals. Go, girl. Mystic Row will take a World Cup medal in her second ever race, her first time on this track. 62-65 for Jacka. Well, she didn't have the cleanest of runs. Her form is usually exceptional. You'll see that in Innsbruck, but there again, look. Wasn't convinced the line was right. Had to get the toe down. Christian Bauder sees the mistakes that Jacka feels, but she's back. Mystic Row, Jacqueline Pfeiffer, Hannah Nyes in the top three. Can Tabby Sturker take a medal as well? The former trapeze artist for Great Britain, her second World Cup race. 6.16 getaway, quicker than her first start as well. And she was the second, oh, she was the fastest starter. We have had a quicker one, 6.12 from Valentina Margaglio. But this is for a medal for Tabby Sturker, another of the young British sliders brought through the system by James Howard. Lots of work going on early on. Only two tenths up. She's still two tenths ahead of Mystique. This is going to be close at the bottom, though. Lots of speed going out to the sled early on. 700s up. There's only 300s, first to second at the moment. And if she wants to take a medal with one to go, she needs to be at least second. Her previous World Cup race, she was in seventh place. It's going to be close. I'm not sure if she's got enough speed. She's starting to build the lead again. It was up to a tenth. It's 700. She's in the medals. She will take at least a silver medal. Tabby Sturker, her second ever World Cup race. Wow. Tabitha Sturker, who came from genuinely circus school. She was a trapeze artist, I know. Well, she knows how to stick a landing, that's for sure. It did just get away from her early on, but she steadied the ship. Yes. She leads one to go. Kimberly Boss, Olympic bronze medalist, World Cup champion, world championship silver medalist in the last two seasons. Leads here, 6.35 the getaway. So Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands is behind as she gets down into turn, turn four. 1500s the margin she's got to make up. She's got experience on her side. Fifth best speed. 2400s is the gap. Now don't forget, Tabitha Sturker was a little wild early on, and then she had enough speed at the bottom to hang on to it. She's half the gap though. Kimberly Boss is coming. It's going to be Kimberly Boss or Tabby Sturker to take the win here. Fifth best speed for Kimberly Boss. 500s back, but working hard. 200s back. Oh, cannons off the walls. Is that going to rob her of speed? It is. Is it going to rob her of the win? It's going to be very close at the line. She loses the race. Tabitha Sturker wins it. Tabby Sturker takes the gold. Kimberly Boss takes the bronze and Misty Grow takes the silver medal. Uh, yeah. Wow. Our first heat leader, Kimberly Boss. It's where she pinballs across the track here. That robs her of so much speed. She's got the skid coming out, working hard to straighten up the line on the Bromley sled. Just a hair's breadth away. It's fine. It's fine. Exactly. There's congratulations. And there is your winner.
from? Well, <laughs> don't worry where it came from. Just do it again. Tabby Stoker wins for Great Britain. And the top two, Tabby Stoker and Mystic Row, between them have a total now of four World Cup starts. It's the second race in the World Cup for each of them. So Tabby, seventh on her debut in Winterberg in 2023. Now her first race of the new season, and she claims a gold medal. Well, that is one for the history books. The first trapeze flyer to win a World Cup sliding medal. Tabby Sturker, gold. Silver goes to Mystic Row and bronze to Kimberly Boss. Jackie Pfeiffer on her return to the World Cup, 100th out of the medals. Head of the Olympic champion, Hannah Neiser. Valentina Margaglio, sixth. Kim Marmons in seventh. Head of Jane Channel. And then uh, uh, Tina Herman and Hallie Clark. Well, some great debuts today. Sarah Schmidt, 13th. Freya Tarbit, her second race, 14th, tied with Anna Fernstedt. Sarah Roderick again, uh, second race in the top 20. And Kelly Delker in 19th, ahead of Amelia Coltman. Anya Unterscheider, great race from her, from Data Zunta. Julia Simpson and Anna Zauli to make the cut on their first World Cup start as well. Well, plenty of entertainment to kick off the weekend here in La Plagne in France. And don't forget that the men's race comes up this afternoon as well. And we'll be starting our coverage at 20 past one. That's midday 20 Greenwich Mean Time, so an hour or so from now. But for the moment, the GB men will be celebrating victory for Tabby Sturker. Unbelievable. Thanks, everybody, for watching. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So Tina Herman is the World Cup points leader from Kimberly Boss and Kim Marmons. And Valentina Margali lies in fourth place. For those who have joined in uh, here and missed out on the races or the race weekend in Beijing that opened the season. It'll be a, a long while before they undo that deficit. But uh, a first win of her career, which is now two races old, <laughs> puts Tabby Stoker just outside the top 10. And Mystic Row hot on her heels as well. And Jackie Pfeiffer, Suzanne Kreyer, who pulled out of the race here, tied together just inside the top 20. So there you go, 31 sleds in the first heat, 25 in the second, and four races in total in the World Cup between our top two in the race here in La Plane. And some brand new nations, Estonia, Colombia, Liechtenstein, and Malta being represented in the sliding sports in skeleton for the very first time. Fantastic stuff here. Don't forget, we'll be back in a little over an hour with coverage of the men's skeleton race. Until then, from the IBSF TV crew here in La Plan, Martin Haven saying thank you for joining us. Join us again for the men's competition. The pressure will be just as high on them as it was on our women. We'll see you then. Bye for now.